Hey everybody. Welcome to another episode of uh, Stock Talk. Uh, my name is Amon Reyna. I'm an investment coach here at Sage Investors, and this is episode 51. Um, one of the things as investors that we're constantly doing to try and figure out to make better investment decisions is we're always trying to look for that magic uh, that magic data point, that magic ratio, that magic formula that's going to kind of lead us to making better investment decisions. And, uh, you know, it comes with the gig, it comes with the territory. But little did we know that there might be, there's some kind of metrics and obscure measurements out there or just concepts out there that are might open uh, open the door to uh to making some interesting uh, investment decisions. A couple of episodes ago, I talked to you. I talked a little bit about how uh, one study out there talked about how body type and size, your body size, can influence and influence the type of investment decisions you can make. And so that's kind of out there. But thought I'd share with you another one that I uh, came across. And this was in uh, published. It was a research uh, report published in the Journal of Financial Markets. And uh, was done by a couple of people out in the University of Alabama at Huntsville. Basically, their premise was, and it revolves around ticker symbols. And basically, what they, their analysis showed um, was that the more likable and the more easily uh, that you can pronounce uh, a ticker symbol, uh, it can have a positive influence on share price. So I go, really? <laughs> it's it's kind of out there. So you know, I dived into it, and, uh, read a little bit a bit, a bit about it. Um, what they said was uh, they surveyed a whole bunch of WACA students and they asked them to rate up to almost 1,900 different uh, ticker symbols that have been out there between 1982 and 2011. And what they found was that the ticker symbols that uh, the people liked um, had a, carried a higher um, share price or increase in share price than ticker symbols that people didn't like. So like, for example, a, a ticker symbol like uh, ACE, ACE, or BRO, B-R-O, or L-U-V, for example, for Southwest Airlines, um, carry, tend to carry higher valuations, and, uh, uh, higher valuations, higher st stock prices, uh, compared to a ticker symbol like uh, JWN, which is Nordstrom's, or ZQK, or ZFW. Um, the big thing they noticed was that ticker symbols that people liked, and or they could easily pronounce the ticker symbol, tend to have higher liquidity. They traded more. They had a lot of volume. So there was much more interest. There was more and more uh, more investor interest. And you know, it's it's pretty out there. And uh, the thing, interesting thing, why the the the, the professors that, that wrote the study or conducted the study thought it might have some legs was that. The ticker symbol really doesn't reflect anything um, in terms of fundamentals of the business. It doesn't reflect cash flow or, you know, the balance sheet or you know future cash flow or discounted cash flow or valuation. It's just a ticker symbol. It's three, four letters. Um, so, but what they said was it, it may serve an interesting little incentive for companies that are thinking of going public to maybe spend a little bit extra time um, crafting. Uh, a ticker symbol that's you know consistent with the brand, and instead of just arbitrarily coming up with you know a bunch of letters together like Nordstrom's, you'd think it'd be something related to Nordstrom's, but you know JWN, it's it's nothing. It's it does, has no doesn't seem to have any um, major correlation or relatability to to the company or to the brand. So interesting stuff and again this is you know something you may want to keep in your back pocket as you're formulating your investment decisions yeah a ticker symbol who would have thought you know ticker symbol to me has always been just something three or four letters you enter in on your trade order um never really thought it could actually influence uh, stock prices but here's one study that says you know what you might want to take a look at it um, actually interesting the authors of the study are now going to be looking at uh, the second stage of their analysis they're going to actually start looking at company names and see the impact of how easily it is to pronounce and you know, relate or like a like a company name, um, can that have an impact in how stock prices are set? So that's coming some, kind of something interesting. I think of an example like you know, um, Philip Morris that eventually became Altria. Did that have an impact in the stock price? Or up here in Canada, Alberta Energy Company. If anybody remembers that from like 15 years ago, when they converted their they changed their name to Encana. So 
does that have an impact on on the marketability liquidity of a, of a share price who knows we'll see well, well you know I'll, I'll be interested to see what that what that looks like um, that's pretty much it that's all I just share with you a quick and uh, quick and easy uh, little uh, tidbit for you um, if you have any questions about this you want to weigh in on this um, little uh, nugget of information you can uh, give me a shout at uh, through my Twitter handle at Sage Investors, where I'm on there commenting on various market observations uh, that I'm seeing, and also my personal investment decisions I tweet in real time. Uh, or you can hit me through my website, send me an email through my website, uh, www.sageinvestors.ca. So that's another edition of Stock Talk. My name is Amin Reina from Sage Investors, and we'll catch you again another time. Take care. Bye.